I think in the early 90s, comic book fans in high school were the ostracized geeks and nerds, absolutely. But when you get those group of geeks and nerds together, they're almost like their own street gang. <laughs> Join the club, comic books are awesome, they're fun. I like comic book stores for the uh, the discovery. You come in, you don't know what's here, you don't know what you're gonna find, but you know it might be something that you really like. So that's why I like coming into to comic book stores. Sometimes it's just weird little things, um, but I have all, all four of these Secret War guys, and they're literally the only four that I have. So I think it's funny that, that they would have those. Most of my early influences is Silver Age because of my uh, my uncle Jeff's collection. So he had, you know, the 60s Hulks and the 70s, you know, whatever, mostly Marvel. So I would go over and read them. He had a lot of Ghost Rider. And I used to just kind of trace the pictures from the book, which in hindsight was probably really bad for the book. But, you know, whatever. He didn't seem to care. I'm uh, Carl Howard. I had a locker across the hall from him in high school. It would have been 1991 or 1992, somewhere around there, maybe earlier, 1990. And uh, he had drawings inside of his locker door of X-Men characters. And I was, I had a little comic shop going at the time. I was speaking to him, as, I saw him open his locker and I turned around and said, hey, you draw comics? I was a big art guy as well, so. We just started talking in the hallway, being geeks and fanboys about comic books. Well, when I was young, um, being small and artistic and relatively quiet, I got picked on like frequently, every day, all day. And I could come home and, you know, I could read my comic books. You know, I could hang out with Batman and Robin for a couple hours. So uh, I would say that, you know, that was a really good way to escape from everything. For the most part, uh, if him and I were out walking and it was late or something and we saw someone that we weren't quite familiar with, we would, you know, quickly get out of that situation. Uh, I was coming home from a long walk. Uh, I was, I had made my way from home to the other side of town and I was on my way back home. I was about two blocks away from where I live when I was stopped by two guys. The guy stood in front of me and he, uh, he said, hey, what you doing? I said, nothing. And he said, uh, you know, is that a new Walkman? And I said, yeah, it is. I thought that was weird. I just started walking again. And uh, him and his friend kind of ran up ahead of me a little bit. This time I knew something was not quite right. He says, I would like you to hand it over. And I just, I don't know, I just didn't want the guy to have it. So I, I hit him in the face with it as hard as I could. And I remember him grabbing his face. I remember him yelling, like, my nose, you broke my nose. The other guy had kind of left his friend behind. I think I'm, I'm at peace with it at this point. Um, even when it happened, it was so surreal that I didn't, like, come home and tell anybody. I actually thought about it for a few days, and I, then I started telling people, like, you know, this is what happened to me a couple days ago. And everyone's like, you know, why didn't you call the police? And, you know, and I just, at that point, what were they going to do, right? So... You know, I was afraid to go anywhere by myself for a while. I'd usually like, you know, I had my license already, so I mean, I would drive instead of walk, and I did a lot more of that. So it, it didn't impact my ability to go around by myself for a long time. There, there was fear, you could see it, but it had been overcome, and like I said previously, uh, deep inside there was a realization uh, no longer was it going to be allowed to be fear. He had stepped up confidence in himself. Was was sure of his abilities after watching him describe to me having the Walkman. That's a nice Walkman. 
it is a nice walk because <laughs> it still had blood on it afterwards. Like, it was totally awesome. Like, he stood up for himself against not just one individual, there's two of them, was there not? Yeah. But it was a definitely a confidence boosting change of direction for the way Carl would lead himself, I would imagine. You know, my comic book did spring from that night because it had a lot to do with the music. Like, I was listening to music. I hit the guy in the face with something that creates music, and um, it just kept on playing. It didn't skip, didn't warble, nothing. It was perfect. And um, so I started thinking about that, like, what if someone could use music or sound like as a weapon? And there were superheroes that could scream and had sonic powers, but I thought this was a whole different, different ball game, you know? Like you're actually using music as a weapon. Well, definitely. I mean, I've seen Pinion go from, you know, the very early stages. Um, I think it was a opinion as a character that allows him to explore different, uh, uh, I guess, um, situations that maybe he might not be able to explore uh, in real life. So, again, just that ability to stick up uh, and help people out, it's just another way of uh, helping that type of situation. Well, I do a lot of hands, hands on drawing. So, um, I use blue pencil, I use marker, things like that, but I've recently started using a program called uh, Manga Studio, and I can literally do the whole thing digitally beginning to end, and it's fantastic. It just speeds everything up. I think one of my biggest problems was that I have these ideas, and I want to get them on the piece of paper like immediately, and sometimes it doesn't go as fast as I like. I named the character Pinion after a song from Nine Inch Nails. It's not really a song, more of a track, and um, it's really quiet. And then as it goes, it just gets louder and louder and louder. And anyone who's never heard the, uh, the song before, they will instinctively turn up the volume because they can't hear it. And then when the next song hits you, it's like deafening and you almost like scream and shut off the, the tape recorder or tape player. And um, so I thought that just really was perfect for the character because, you know, it's a girl and at first she seems harmless, but then, you know, if you cross her, you get too far with it, like you're gonna be screaming and going the other way too. Pinion is a great character. I think there's not enough female characters um, out there, especially like new age. I find like there's Wonder Woman and all those other classic ones, but now it's really nice to actually see um, a new one infused with music. So it's, it's kind of got a Scott Pilgrim-ish, I guess, aspect of it. It's got something a little bit new and it had, like, it opens the gateways to um, new music and um, new rhythm and a different lifestyle for girls to be portrayed, I guess. Well, if, if I get a table at WizardCon this year, my, my goal will be to um, promote my own work as an artist, you know, try to get a job through that, but promote Pinion as an idea so this would be like my first time going to one where I, I've had something to give to people and say, you know, look at my story.